The reason why I went super aggressive is that if our opponent does have the Call by the Grave, we do have the Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion to stop the Call by the Grave, so we're guaranteed to draw. And if they don't, well, we're going to get an additional card regardless. So we're going to special summon a Doom King Balladrock to our side of the field. And then we're going to draw Super Polymerization, which is great for following up on the very next turn. We'll also have Rivalry of the Warlords to prevent our opponent from doing things, as all monsters will be zombie on the side of the field, so they wouldn't be able to commit any additional monsters unless they were originally zombies. Zombies got a huge boost with Super Polymerization 2-3. It allows you to break boards a little more consistently and make Zombie World a true threat whether you were going first or going second. The only thing that plagues Zombie decks or Zombie World decks is consistency and needing multiple parts to make the strategy effective. With that being said, I have to say that Zombie World decks are at a solid tier 2 status. There is so many things that could be improved with later cards that we may receive, but ultimately I think it's a very solid deck to play at a local or even a regional level event. Starting off with the monsters, we're going to run three copies of Shirinui Solitaire and three copies of Yuna Zombie. This are, these are our starter cards. They're really important to the strategy. The Shirinui Solitaire's sole purpose is to get Unizombie to our side of the field. So essentially, we are playing six copies of Unizombie. And what this card does is it gets zombie monsters to the graveyard, which will allow us to trigger our effects. For the Zombie World engine, just two copies of Balor Drock. You don't need more than two. Um, you could actually probably get away with one copy of Doom King Baladrock if you are that spicy. You just have to be very wary of Cold by the Grave. I play two because if one gets cold, you still have a strategy with Doom King Baladrock, and it is the most important monster that you want to summon to your side of the field. Two copies of Necro World Banshee. This is a card that I really wanted to play three of because people do sleep on its own field effect to preventing your, your, your field spell from being targeted. But ultimately, it does search Zombie World and gives you access to five Zombie Worlds in your deck. Um, if you combine it with Unizombie, you have eight Zombie Worlds. If you combine it with Shirinui Solitaire, you have 11 Zombie Worlds. And that's probably the reason why you don't play cards like Terraforming or Metaverse, because you just simply don't need it. Two copies of Glow of Bloom to complement the Doom King Balladrock, as Balladrock is its only uh, target. Uh, this card basically just fetches your Doom King Baladrock to your side of the field. But that's it for the Zombie World components. We run six hand traps. One of them is really expensive. It's two copies of Fantastical Dragon Phantasmic. And from my testing, I figured that Fantastical Dragon or Thanos is probably one of the best hand traps for this particular deck because it does summon itself to the side of the field as a dragon unless Zombie World is on your side of the field. Then it summons himself as a zombie monster, which this deck can sometimes struggle with having multiple monsters or needing multiple monsters to your side of the field to pop off with your plays. Sometimes you don't open your Shirinui Solitaire or your Yuna Zombie, but you may open a Necro World Banshee or Globu in the zombie world and you just need an additional card to start popping off with your link plays which will get you free resources not only that thanos does help you with your bricks allowing you to draw cards and then shuffle cards from your hand back into your deck and get you the right hand that you need now very understandably that people can't afford thanos uh ghost ogres Effect Veilers, more Ash Blossoms, and more Ghost Bells are very good options. Two copies of Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. Keep in mind that Ash Blossom does trigger Doom King Balladrox effect. And two copies of Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion in the main board. Now, you guys are probably thinking, Cali Effect, why are you running Ghost Bells in the main board? Well, Call by the Grave is probably one of this deck's biggest problems. And not only does Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion trigger your Doom King Balladrox, it actually stops Call by the Grave. And a lot of decks uh, that are in the top meta are playing some sort of revival or recursion from the graveyard so it does have applications if your opponent just so happens to not be playing cold by the grave that's pretty much it for the monsters at 18 a monster that i really wanted to highlight and talk about was mizuki um i think that mizuki is a decent one of i probably wouldn't i definitely wouldn't play more than two really good one of because uh, it allows you to extend your plays after you've already made your combo, but I just did not have room for it. Um, and it is a brick card. <laughs> Ironically, Mizuki isn't the greatest card to open. It's it's a brick. Uh, for the spells, we read three copies of Zombie World. Of course, you want to turn all monsters on the field, Zombie. This is your ultimate disruption. It actually wins in so many matchups. It makes Salomon Great's time a lot harder. Um, 
it makes the Thunder Dragon matchup for them a lot harder. It, it just does so many things automatically before you start even popping off with your plays. But more importantly, it turns all monsters on the field zombie, which complements so well with your super polymerization because at the cost of discarding one card, you can essentially break your opponent's board fusing their monsters for your Dragon Necro Nether Soul Dragon. Two copies or three copies of Call by the Grave. Of course, you don't want to be hand trapped in this deck and you also want to be able to disrupt your opponent. Call by the Grave is played at three. Two copies of Instant Fusion. I actually wanted to play three copies of Instant Fusion until I realized that uh, while it's a great card, it's it's one of those moments where you want to play three, but then you get around to playing three and it, it, you're like, nah, two is perfect. Um, another card I want to highlight is Mind Control I wanted to play in here. And mainly because Mind Control helps you with your going second matchup, taking your opponent's monster and then linking it off with Zombie World on the field into any of your Vampire Suckers or Avenger Saviors is just too strong. Next, I do play three copies of Pot of Extravagance. Now, people can't afford Pot of Extravagance just like how they can't afford Thanos, but I strongly suggest that if you do have Pot of Extravagance, you should be playing it in this deck. This deck doesn't really need the extra deck. It's nice to have, but Pot of Extravagance lets you get deeper into your combo pieces, lets you get into your cards. Um, but for the people that can't afford Pot of Extravagance, I would just strongly suggest maybe playing Mind Control. There's really no substitute for this card, so just playing cards like Mind Control or um, you know, playing whatever you feel, maybe Mizuki's in here may be better for you in this particular sequence, but uh, Pot of Extravagance is really good for digging into your pieces, or maybe even playing more copies of your Zombie World parts. Uh, next is one copy of One for One, and one copy of Foolish Burial. One for One is the worst best card in this deck because it does search you or special summon to your side of the field your glow bloom for free which is so many co so much combo potential especially if you're discarding a card like necro or banshee but at the same time it's like if you already popped off with your play it, it's kind of dead and we only run 18 monsters a lot of these monsters we don't want to send to the graveyard but it's almost a necessary piece to be able to get your plays together and then foolish burial is free in this deck that's it for these spells uh, onto the traps, we run three copies of Rivalry of the Warlords. This is an insane lock against so many decks, actually probably against every deck for the exception of the mirror match. Basically what you do is you have Zombie World on your side of the field saying that, uh, you know, your opponents, all the monsters on the field in Graveyard are zombie. And then you have Rivalry of the Warlords, which basically forces them uh, saying that they can't commit any additional monsters to the side of the field unless they were initially zombie in the first place. So Rivalry of the Warlords for Zombie World is an amazing lock. You don't always pop this off, but when you do, it it's pretty dangerous. I mean, Rivalry actually does have uh, some really good matchups against Thunder Dragon and some other decks that like just prevent them from, or make them go all mono. Uh, against Subterra, they're gonna be really upset because you Rivalry when they won uh, the, you know, that one card, uh, uh, if you Rivalry them while they go, there can be only one, then you guys are both locked into only playing one monster and your monsters can be bigger than theirs, so it can be a problem for them. Uh, three copies of Crackdown. Uh, Crackdown is amazing in this deck. Again, I was always looking to play Mind Control in this deck, but I also wanted a disruption for going first. I play a lot of going second cards like Instant Fusion, Super Polymerization, but I also want them to be great going first. Like Instant Fusion can get Millenniumized Restrict, and Super Polymerization is a great set for disruptions on your opponent's turn. Crackdown fulfills that same role. It is an amazing going first card because not only does it snatch your opponent's monster that you can use for a link play, it also prevents your opponent from activating that monster effect if you time it correctly and it's also a decent going second card because after your opponent has made their board you can use crack down to uh, basically break their negate board and take their monsters for your own that's it for the traps for the extra deck i read three copies of dragon necro the nether soul dragon this is the card that you want to summon the most off of your super polymerization targets but I also do run that Starving Venom Dragon if your opponent just so happens to be playing a dark board. Uh, no other Super Poly targets. I felt that this was amazing. I do have 11 ways to get in the zombie world, so I'm going to really rely on that zombie world to be able to pop off. One copy of Millennium Eyes Restrict and one copy of Thousand Eyes Restrict. For the people that can't afford Millennium Eyes Restrict, just go ahead and play another Thousand Eyes Restrict, ladies and gentlemen. Millennium Eyes Restrict does prevent your opponent from hand-trapping you in certain sequences, but sometimes, obviously, if you can't afford it, you can't afford it. 
three copies of Vampire Sucker. This is pretty much mandatory in any extravagance build, but if you guys are not playing an extravagance build, obviously your ratios can pretty much be whatever you want. Two copies of Avenger and Savior. This would be a one of if I didn't play multiple extravagances, and it's a pretty good card because any two zombie monsters can get you into your combo by sending a certain monster from your deck to the graveyard. Next is one copy of Cypher and Lord Lambda. I felt that I needed a really good Link 2 monster with arrows pointing down in a situation that I didn't have Zombie World on the field, and I had an opponent's monster in a Necro or Banshee or something like that, so Lambda actually came to mind. One copy of Nightmare Unicorn, one copy of Nightmare Phoenix, and of course, the Link Kribo. That's it for the main board and the extra deck for the side deck. As you guys can see, we get not necessarily spicy. Mind controls do help with going second, and all the other cards are pretty much, I wouldn't say standard, but you know, they're self-explanatory. Explanatory. So now that we are done with the main board, the sideboard, and the extra deck, instead of showing you guys just some simple combos, I'm actually going to show you guys some test stands, and hopefully there will be some combos I can show you within them. Okay guys, so before we get into our first test hand, I just wanted to let you know if you wanted to see more deck profiles, make sure we destroy that like button. Let's try to get to a thousand likes on this video for the people that want to see more uh live duels then of course we do have a zombie versus solomon great live duel that you guys can check out so opening into our first hand we're gonna get pot of extravagance yuna zombie ghost bell and haunted mansion Cold by the Grave and Rivalry of the Warlords. This actually is not a bad hand. We're gonna obviously start off with Pot of Extravagance. We do have it protected from Call by the Grave. So if our opponent does try to Ash Blossom and Joy to spring us, we do have options as the weekend would say. So uh, it's gonna be really interesting to see what we're gonna do with this. I'm gonna banish one, two, three, four, five, six. And as long as we don't banish Triple Vampire Sucker, we're in the gold. We banished no Vampire Suckers this time around. We're going to be able to draw two additional cards. Um, before I even get into this, I just want to say uh, we're going to either need a Zombie World, a Necro World Banshee, or a um, <clears throat> Glow Up Bloom to, in order to complete this combo, which gives us, okay, so Unizombie's at three. The other two are at seven. Seven and a 34% chance that we'll get it, and we're drawing two, so, you know, it's... it's Oh, we actually drew the Zombie World. That's actually good. So we drew Crackdown and Zombie World, which allows us to not only pop off with our combo, we'll be able to make a spicy board. I'm going to go ahead and start off by activating Zombie World and then normal summoning Unizombie to my side of the field. Using its effect, instead of sending Necro or Banshee, we're just going to go ahead and straight up send the Gold Bloom, banishing itself to Special Summon the Doom King Balladrock. Now, both the Doom King Balladrock and the Unizombie, I will go aggressive. I will use both of these monsters for a Link Summon into our Vampire Sucker. Let me go ahead and move. I'm just going to place this beside it. We're going to make a Link Summon into our Vampire Sucker. And then we're going to set three cards face down and pass our turn. Now, the reason why I went super aggressive is that if our opponent does have the Call by the Grave, we do have the Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion to stop the Call by the Grave, so we're guaranteed to draw. And if they don't, well, we're going to get an additional card regardless. So we're going to special summon a Doom King Balladrock to our side of the field. And then we're going to draw Super Polymerization, which is great for following up on the very next turn. We'll also have Rivalry of the Warlords to prevent our opponent from doing things, as all monsters will be zombie on the side of the field, so they wouldn't be able to commit any additional monsters unless they were originally zombies so that is just a really really good hand i'm actually pretty surprised i got one so good in our very first test hand as i said this deck does have some consistency issues so i expect to have at least one or two maybe even two inconsistent hands or some really good going second hands that aren't necessarily great for going first so uh opening into our next test hand we're gonna get crackdown banshee Foolish Burial, Super Polymerization, and Crackdown. So this would be a really good hand going second. <coughs> Excuse me. Depending on our opponent, what our opponent has. Um, what we would be able to do is Super Polymerization both their cards by discarding the Necro or Banshee. Let's say hypothetically they had two Dark Monsters, we'd make the Starving Venom. And then our Necro or Banshee would banish itself to activate Zombie World. We'd be able to do our due, ladies and gentlemen by activating the Foolish Burial. We'll go ahead and send a Glow of Bloom to the graveyard, which will banish itself for a Doom King Balladrock. So this would be our ending board. What an opponent has a broken board. We'd be able to flick 
a lot of damage <laughs> and then use if we want to go aggressive we'd use this would be banished too. we'd use these two monsters for a link summon into our vampire sucker set double crack down and pass our turn on our side of the field doom king valor Truck into an ash blossom and joyous spring that's how you turn a bad hand into a good hand deck's really good at going second so uh one more test hand that i can show you guys Hopefully, we will uh, get another pretty decent to go in. You know, that, that was obviously one of those hands that definitely relied on the opponent's interaction. They needed to have gone first and, you know, obviously put two dark monsters on their side of the field to summon Starving Venom. But if they did, especially in a Yu-Gi-Oh game where dark monsters are just everywhere, then we could pr probably end up with that board as super polymerization can't really be disrupted. And we would have drawn the Ash Blossom and Joy of Spring off of the Vampire sucker so that is insane so our last test hand cold by the grave uh thanos ash blossom zombie world and necro avanchi now this hand is another one of those great going second hands let's say hypothetically we were going second we thanos our opponent giving us a at least a draw two so we'd get an extravagance and a unizombie and now the hand is literally right back on track this is why i love thanos i'm gonna go ahead and shuffle in the banshee and this is this puts our like our deck right back on track into contention. So um, we're gonna go ahead and start our turn. Well, that's amazing. We're gonna activate that super polymerization, or I'm sorry, the zombie world. Uh, and then actually, I'm gonna go ahead. Oh, I can't even. What am I thinking? What am I doing? You're gonna activate pot of extravagance before you activate your zombie world. What am I thinking, Cali? You definitely want to do that. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, as long as we don't banish all three Dragon Necro and all three Vampire Sucker, we're fine. All right, we banished two Vampire Sucker in a Starving Venom. That's fine. We'll be able to draw two cards. Uh, that's actually not great, but they are targets for your Super Polymerization. So it's not bad. I'm going to go ahead and activate that Zombie World following up by uh I, depending on our opponent's board if it was really troublesome we can just go bam super polymerization summon that dragon necro and then use the dragon necro on the thanos for a link but let's say it isn't that problematic no disruptions uh on the field that we need to worry about so go ahead and use unizombie to normal summon sending your glow of bloom to the graveyard to summon your doom king power drop and now you can use these two for a link Ironically, I keep forgetting about how Avengered Slayer is really good. Into our Vampire Sucker. Uh, let me, I'm just looking to see if, uh, no, 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 I don't, I forgot, I don't play Masuki. Into our Vampire Sucker. Then we can Super Polymerization our opponent's monsters. Into that Dragon Necro. And now our ending board is going to end with a really decent hand. We'll have a Call by the Grave for Disruption, Ash Blossom Enjoy a Spring, and a Doom King Balor Drock, which nets us a Foolish Burial for the next turn. Thank you guys so much for watching another segment of the Cali Effect. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and give it a like. And if you really did, consider joining our Patreon. We have some awesome rewards. Please like, comment, subscribe. But most of all, enjoy. I hope you guys are having a great day like I am.